Hello again, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Mark Harville Art painting video. I'm just kind of completing the background here for what will be the uh, water here in this painting. And uh, just mixing a little bit of uh, teal into this, into this blue. And um, I want to just kind of try to get a nice smooth transition and of course this is an, an acrylic so it does dry pretty fast and I've got to move pretty quickly to get that nice transition. I'm just going to come through here now and uh, using some more of that dark blue kind of begin to form the shape of some simple ripples in, uh, in the water here. And this will be, of course, as if we're looking up inside the uh, deep part of the ocean. So I want to just have a little bit of a silhouette here, sort of outlining the top. And these are just some simple brush strokes. I'm using a very small round brush to kind of get that detail and get that control. I wanted to get a few little outlines of some fish that we've got going. Not really taking a lot of time here, uh, working pretty quickly still. These are going to be in the background. They're just going to be silhouettes. So there's really no need for taking a lot of time and energy into painting these in. And some of them will, of course, get covered up by our, by our shark and then that's fine. Um, I'll be able to go back later once I've painted the shark in and we can add some more around his uh, his body and that way we can kind of uh, have a nice variety here. But I find it good to go ahead and paint these in now knowing that some will either get fully covered or maybe even partially covered. And that'll help to tuck them away a little bit better. So using the airbrush here and I wanted to get some really simple little sun glow from the uh, from the light source here at the top shining down into the water. This of course can be done with a paintbrush as well. Um, you can of course I'm using acrylic. Um, you can make it just a very fine wash um, of color and sort of dry brush it on. But I, I enjoy the airbrush and wanted to incorporate that a little bit. And I'm kind of creating a little bit of a vignette here. Um, I've mixed together kind of a, a dark bluish purple and just wanted to get that at the bottom. And now that I've painted in, or at least I've drawn in the uh, outline of our of our shark, which will be the primary focal point. Um, just wanted to start here by beginning in the mouth region, getting the mouth kind of painted in. And just using, just using black. And um, be able to get that kind of that darkest part of the, uh, of his jawbone here. Now I've mixed together a, a little gray color uh, you don't want to make the teeth pure white. Um, really, very few things in nature are ever actually truly white. So it's good just to start with a little bit of a gray tone. And then we can lighten that gray tone up and add some a little bit more uh, saturated, brighter brighter um, grays and, and nearly white color. Um, that'll help with creating that three-dimensionality. And just take a few minutes here and I'm working on bringing this in. So I, I have a reference photo that I picked up um, I believe that this photo 
I ended up purchasing from Pixabay. Um, there's a few decent websites um, for wildlife references and uh, another one would be Unsplash. Um, so went in there and, and found this image of this shark and thought it would be kind of fun to incorporate. So I'm trying to trying to follow this basic um, reference photo guide that I have, but I will sort of deviate a little bit from it. I mostly wanted to kind of use it as a as a loose reference and then use a little bit of artistic license on how I wanted to complete him. Okay, now I'm coming back here and I'm just adding some some really thin washes of paint at this point in time. Um, I'm, I've mixed together just a really light kind of blue-gray and uh, mostly I'm using I'm using that teal green using ultramarine blue uh, using a little bit of umber and of course uh, titanium white are going to be the primarily what I'm using on my palette here for his body so I can kind of just kind of bring in some of the some of the dark areas and the shadowy areas as well, kind of get that painted in. Of course, his underbelly is going to going to be um, sort of lighter since this is going to be a a great white shark. I believe I'm just using um, I'm just using a simple flat brush. Uh, for this. It's, it's a pretty small flat brush. I want to say it's maybe like a number four um, that will help me to go ahead and, and kind of splash this color on really quickly. And then for his for the rest of his body I've just kind of gone in and, and made more of a, of a bluish gray mixture here between those colors. I think I even added a little bit of dioxazine purple on my palette and we'll sort of use that mixed as well. I like purple and uh, I say this often but it, it's a natural shadow color if it's used properly and, and in very sparing quantities because it definitely can overpower uh, any painting pretty quickly so just use it a little bit sparingly. You're gonna see me create a lot of glazing uh, with this painting so I'm gonna go ahead and just block everything in in a in a fairly uh, fluid sort of paint. Um, there's enough paint on there that I don't lose that uh, pigment or that that transparency but uh, I'm able to get it on here pretty quickly and um, let that go ahead and dry which only takes a few minutes I pull out the air the um, blow dryer as well and, and try to get it dry that way pretty quick so I'm using my tree and texture brush I've talked about this brush quite a bit I purchased this brush from Rosemary and Company and great brush I've got a few of them um, it's got some nice fine bristles and I can splay them out and I can stipple on uh, a lot of nice definition and texture and so I'm just sort of playing around I want to get the illusion that there's some details uh, in the uh, sharks um, hide and so I'm just kind of watered down a little bit it, it's really mostly a dry dry brush. Uh, there's not a lot of water on my brush but just enough that I can get that stippled on so I'll, I'll cover the surface of, of the shark's uh, skin that way. Now I can come back here and start adding a little bit more detail but I want to first kind of get this all kind of brought in and this is just with with pure black paint and of course as I begin my my glazing that will remove any hard edges and kind of soften some stuff and it will 
it'll desaturate um, a lot of those kind of darker, harder colors. So it's sort of my first, my first bit of glazing right now. I'm kind of just bringing in some shadows and I'm mixing, uh, I'd probably say it's maybe a 50-50 water to, um, to paint sort of ratio. And I've had folks ask me about glazing and um, I do glazing both with acrylic paint as well as with oil paint. Um, it's a little bit different approach, but the principle is all the same. And so by mixing up kind of this very fluid sort of mixture, I can really get that transparency so that a lot of that underpainting can still sort of show through um, and without killing it all. But I will go back through here and I'll continue to glaze and then just sort of layer color on top of color. And that'll begin to help with that illusion of creating a little bit of realism uh, with our shark. So I'm using a bit of a smaller brush uh, just so I can kind of hang on to that um, that control. And then coming back and just kind of doing a little bit more stippling around his body. And I can use this glazing to not only blend and soften, I can use it to adjust colors. Um, and a lot of times I'm not overly concerned about the color I'm using at the beginning. I'm really thinking a lot more about shape and form, about getting the details in. And I can always adjust color with glazing later on as well. All right, so I've mixed together kind of a mixture of teal with some burnt umber, kind of desaturated that teal color. And I can start to stipple that on as well. But I want to keep that sort of bluish teal kind of color uh, into the body of the shark to help it to really tie in to the water background. That way he doesn't look like he's just kind of uh, a sticker uh, stuck into the painting, but it, he's really more a part of the painting this way as I just try to tie it all together. So I can come through here and kind of stipple on a little bit more detail but really start kind of thinking about light and shadow and begin to form some of that shape. Now I'm coming through here and I'm glazing once again. I've let this dry. So I've got thin washes of glaze and I can come through and I can start to cover this up. And um, I'm just using mostly an ultramarine blue and a little bit of black and and, and watering that down enough that it still stays fairly transparent and still allows a lot of that underpainting work to show through. And I can come back on top of that and kind of layer more color. And I'm just stippling once again, bringing a little bit more of that teal color. And so I'll just bounce back and forth, kind of pushing and pulling my colors and creating shape and form, trying to achieve detail as if these are kind of pores or skin or wrinkles and folds in, in his hide. And, and then I can go back and continue to sort of soften and blend, add some more glaze, And so you'll see me here, I'll just sort of go back and forth. Here's another glaze, kind of start to go over that. You want to make sure though that any time prior to lazing it, laying a glaze out that you do allow this to fully dry so that you're not streaking everything. That can always be kind of frustrating. But it shouldn't really take too long with acrylic paint to, to allow it to dry fully. And see, I'm using my my blow dryer just to kind of speed that process up. 
Um, so now I can come back, now I can begin to add some, a little bit more refined details. And so in the beginning, I often use fairly big brushes. Um, and then as I start to really narrow in on more detail, I'll move to those smaller brushes. A lot of rigger brushes, uh, usually zero uh, size ones and two brushes, just really small heads to help me with that. I also use a lot of filbert brushes. I love filbert brushes. I've got several sizes of filberts and I think that they just help a lot with adding softness. And I'm using a fil filbert brush here right now. This is a smaller uh, filbert. Um, I can't even remember the size of this one, but just a smaller head. And I can come back and I can sort of just dry brush on, scumbling a little bit, a little bit more color, going into those teals, bring in some more blues, and sort of getting some of that reflected highlight from our light source that is filtering through the waves. And I could just bring that kind of in. This is where I can really just start to bring out the different the different contours of the anatomy on our shark. You can really think about his bone structure and and the wrinkles and folds that is surrounding that structure. Of course it's going to be lighter at the top of his body which is closest to the source of light. And then as I move down toward his belly, it will get darker. And you'll see me come back with some more glazes and begin to darken much more at the bottom while still trying to retain a lot of the detail that we've stippled on. So really, again, this is just an exercise in sort of bouncing back and forth. And, and at this point, I can really kind of play with it and experiment a little and try a couple things. So I come back with some more shadows and I can sort of scumble that on with some really thin washes of paint. come back and add a little bit more brightness now to his, his underbelly, which will help to really separate out his, his tummy from, from the rest of his body. This will really help to, to show that he's, he's a great white shark. They're always a lot brighter on their belly regions and uh, typically very kind of a bluish gray on, on the upper region of their bodies. So I've just mixed um, a little bit of white with some of that blue and, and umber and uh, a little bit of that teal and just kind of brightened it a little bit more. I'm not using pure white. At the very end, I'll add the very slightest little parts of, of almost pure white color, but very sparingly. And I'll use it at the points where I just want some of the, the tonal best to kind of show through, which would be kind of around his nose and his eye, and a little bit around some of his, um, the, the white of his stomach, but it'll be mostly in shadow. I can redraw in those those gills now. They kind of got covered up when I was doing that stippling, and, and that's fine. <clears throat> Sometimes you 
end up covering things and you can always reintroduce them. But if you do those washes and you have them thin enough, oftentimes things like gills and other details, you can still kind of see them through because it's so transparent. And so sometimes I like to introduce those early on just because I, I likely can still see them a little bit through um, that underpainting. So now I'm kind of coming back now and I'm sort of doing a little bit more refining, kind of picking and choosing areas. This is where I'm kind of using a glaze to sort of darken <clears throat> his underbelly a little bit more. That'll help to really establish a little bit more of three-dimensionality, kind of help to aid me in, in some of that realism a little bit more. And I'll, I'll just kind of bounce back and forth with this. Um, I step back and kind of look at the painting and make some decisions and, you know, do I want it darker? I, I do come back a little bit later and add a little bit more teal because I wanted to get a little bit more reflected highlight, kind of showing through uh, in the bottom a little bit more. But um, now it, it's just kind of that refining stage where I can keep kind of adding a few different glazes and if something doesn't work, I can reintroduce a little bit more brightness. And, um, you know, there's really no magic recipe or formula here. It's sometimes just a matter of kind of playing with some, some things and trying some things. And if it doesn't work, you can always correct it, cover it up. So I'm trying to get this dry once again um, so I can bring in some more glazing. This is where I'm bringing in some more teal. I wanted to, I didn't want to lose all that kind of that uh, reflected highlight that's underneath of his body. It's still a little bit darker, um, but that still helps to kind of tie him in with the overall uh, painting and with that background so that he, he just kind of, kind of melds in with the flow of the entire painting. And I can come back with a little bit more bright whites and sort of very sparingly, of course, as I mentioned, just kind of bring those in a little bit more in some areas. I do use bright white, but it's oftentimes at the very end and it's, it's either it, it's rarely in its pure form. Um, often it's it's mixed with a yellow or or a green or something. Um, uh, every once in a while I use uh, just pure white as as really more of a of a accent color more than anything else. And just to kind of be sparing with it because it white can really just can really just be greatly over overdone and then you won't be happy with it. So I'm kind of using my finger a little bit to dab. Fingers can be very good brushes as well at times. Um, so you'll see me kind of do that a little bit also. So I'm kind of going back and doing a little bit more refining. Now I can bring in some of these other fish that uh, Early on, I had covered a few, but now that I can see where, where the body of our shark lies, it's going to be easier for me to be able to work around him now and, and bring just a couple little silhouettes in of some fish. And I want to make sure that uh, some of them also are getting a little bit of reflected light um, on them as well, so that uh, it, it appears as if... Um, there's some, some light striking the tops of their bodies as well. And I'm just using kind of a white with some of that teal green and, um, and that'll help to at least um, kind of draw those out a little bit more and, and help tie those in with, with the flow of the painting. Now I'm coming back and I wanted to add now the lighting from those waves, the ripples that are striking 
the body of, of our shark. He's kind of closer to the surface now as he's hunting and um, we're gonna have some of that. Now I'm, I'm actually painting this in with pure white and I will go back and use some glazes. So I don't mind using pure white when I know that I'm gonna change the color of that. I'm gonna desaturate it with some, with some uh, transparent color. And in this case, I'll get it all kind of painted in these reflections of the ripples and then you'll see me come back and I'll add some of that bluish tealish color um, uh, bluish um, wash uh, of glaze and that'll help to knock that bright white back a little bit and then I'll come back and just add a little bit more highlight at the at the very end here So I'm just sort of playing here, kind of imagining how these ripples are going to look. This is where I'm coming back with some glazing now, and I'm using that bluish teal color that I've mixed together between ultramarine blue and teal. And I can now begin to very slightly um, desaturate some of that bright color. And I'll take a few moments here and I'll kind of play with this as well. But in, in using some of those glazes on um, it, it will, I, I did lose my gills a little bit, so I had to bring those gills back. And, and I'll do a little bit more of that, but I decided to start working on this little fish that the shark is chasing. So I've titled this uh, Painting swim fish swim fishy swim um, <laughs> hoping it gets away um, but it's one of those conundrums where the shark needs to eat and at the same time we don't want the shark to starve but we also don't want our little fish friend to die uh, so it's one of those interesting conundrums in life um, but bringing in a really simple outline of this fish and I don't need to put too much energy or time into this he's going to be a little more detailed than his friends in the back um, but not so much so that he competes with our primary focal point which is our shark so we can just draw him in real quick and I can come back now that I've kind of brought him in and I can work on the rest of our shark and I wanted to bring in a little bit more highlight kind of around his body a little bit more, do a little bit more refining. And then I'll also come back and I'll keep adding a little bit more glazing around the ripples uh, of light um, on that, on the, uh, waves that are reflecting on his back. This is sort of at the point where I will sort of step back quite a bit and kind of just observe the painting and make some decisions. I'm now reglazing again. I, I'm knocking back a lot of that brightness, softening some things with this glaze and just kind of going over his body. Because they don't need to be, they don't need to be too bright. Um, it becomes a little bit too much intensity. So then I decided to do a little more glazing uh, of some shadows here at the in the middle of his body and kind of around the uh, the bottom of his of his belly as well. So I'm I'm just kind of going back and forth. I'm adding a little bit more glaze and and I'm scumbling on a little bit more color as well and so I'm just kind of experimenting and I'm just trying a few things and if that glaze that I've added kind of removes something I can re-add it back in in this case I'm adding a little bit more white in certain little areas just to kind of bring that that brightness back again
bring a little more reflected highlight once again. Sometimes I just have to repeat some of the work that I've already done since the glazing does cause a lot more shadowing and desaturation in and throughout the uh, the shark. So, so I want to bring all that back in, bring back some of the tonal best uh, brightness that I lost through my glazing. But I really just kind of wanted to soften and, and knock back those those ripple effects on his back and um, and so you're gonna lose some things in doing that that's that's fine but I think glazing is just a, a wonderful technique where you're just laying color on top of color you're working in layers you're you're really just kind of refining and softening you can change your you can change your colors um, if you don't like a certain color I'm coming back with some of that teal color and I'm kind of reintroducing some of those those wave ripple effects on his back. Just kind of reintroducing some that got got lost a little bit through glazing. Um, so they're a lot, they're not really bright. Um, a little bit more on the, the teal greenish side. Uh, but wanted to bring those back in and then I can I can use nearly pure white on the very, very top of his body. So this is where I'm kind of using pure white now, because that's going to be closest to the to the light source. So it's it's naturally going to be just a little bit brighter on the top there. And I'm just using a small rigger brush for this, so I can have that detail. And this is really just kind of the the process that I. I took as I created our little shark and so I, I really I really digress quite a bit off of the um, reference photo and and that's perfectly fine it, it served its purpose to give me a really good starting point I, I'm stippling on a little bit more texture now with some very uh, kind of kind of a little bit of black but just a, a very simple stipple and adding a few more little fish and that kind of completes uh, this painting. So I, I appreciate you uh, tuning in. Thank you so much. Please subscribe if you've not done so. Please share the video if you liked it. And please tune back in for next time. Thank you so long.